the planet, completed in December 1830. This triumph of engineering made the final steps from the rocket prototype to the finished article and created a kind of blueprint for every steam locomotive for the next hundred years. With Robert Stevenson's planet and the new Liverpool and Manchester line, Britain had a scheduled passenger railway experience that we would recognise today. Passengers could come here to the Liverpool Road station, the original terminal of the 1830 railway line, and catch a timetabled service to Liverpool. First-class passengers sat in covered carriages, second-class weren't so lucky, with open carriages that took the brunt of the smoke and steam. A stagecoach delivered passengers to the station where they would purchase their ticket. Departure was signalled by a bugle. They hadn't quite worked out how to do railway stations, though. For a start, there was no platform, so the passengers had to climb up into the carriage, like this. But once on board, passengers could look forward to a journey time of just an hour and a half to cover the 30 miles. Great exercise, though. Ah. <whistles> Liverpool, here we come. How come he gets on the footplate? Planet went into service within a year of rocket being built, but she feels like an engine from another era. The biggest difference is that the pistons have moved again. They now sit horizontally, low down between the wheels under the front of the boiler. This gives the engine a much smoother ride, increasingly important as faster and faster speeds are achieved. And the multi-tube boiler of Rocket has been further improved with this dome. A dome allows steam to be collected high above the water level in the boiler, preventing any water getting into the cylinders. This engine is another beautiful replica but it's clear that these and many other small details made the planet a far superior loco. Very reliable, very smooth, and capable of 40 miles an hour. I need to knock off the regulator now a little bit. Well, we're all right till we get to the bridge. Right. Because you can see our stopping point is the two circles on the gate. I see. If we go any farther, we'll be on the main line. OK. We don't want that, do we? No. All of a sudden, I feel I'm on a proper steam train. This is no prototype, no work in progress, but the real deal. And it's wonderful. But that main line is approaching fast. And we have Come one. the day, where's the brakes? That's the brake. OK. So if I pull that slightly, yeah? Very, very slowly. Right. And then regulator back open and back we go. Yes. Quick toot. How exciting, I'm driving planet. A great thrill, it really is, and a lot smoother and a lot quieter and more civilised than, to be honest, I thought it would be. In its first full year, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway Company carried almost half a million passengers, with first class paying five shillings, second class three shillings and sixpence, and a pig, should it wish to travel, one shilling and sixpence. In 1831, its profits were in excess of 70,000 pounds, the equivalent of 5.4 million today. 
railways were now officially big business. New lines would quickly follow, in Britain and then the world, carrying hundreds and then thousands of bigger and bigger trains at speeds that would one day top 200 miles an hour. The planet had led the way into the future. The railway era had begun, and it would make the world a very different place.